What's up guys, it's your boy Milano Miguel, back at it again with another video. Today is episode 20 of the AC Milan vlog series, so here we go. <laughs> Today's episode is going to be a little bit different. We have a lot to cover. Um, the first thing I'll be covering is the Coppa Italia round of 16. So the Coppa Italia, uh, otherwise known as the Italian Cup, took place uh, during the week where Milan and Spal took off in the round of 16. Uh, a lot of players who haven't got a chance to feature or haven't got much playing time got to play in that game. We saw Simon Kier make his debut in that game. Pretty much for the most part, it was a pretty good game. Um, Antonio Donnarumma featured because Gianluigi Donnarumma was injured. Milan played well, they dominated the game. They won 3-0. Uh, Piontek scored, ending his goal drought, having his boom, boom, boom celebration. Uh, Castillejo scored an amazing goal, and Theo Hernandez also scored a goal as well. So Milan have advanced to the quarterfinal round uh, for the Copa Italia, where they will be taking Torino. I will keep you guys updated. Hopefully, we can win the Copa Italia this year and get some silverware and a trophy cap. Moving on. For transfer news, we have Yannick Carrasco is interested in a European return. Yana Carrasco would be a good addition to the team, but I feel like it won't happen. But we'll see what happens. Danny Olmo has also been contacted by AC Milan. Earlier, Danny Olmo came out to say he's an admirer of Juventus and Milan. Uh, I think Danny Olmo would be a very good addition to this team. Uh, he's a great number 10. His agent also came out to say if he wants to join Milan, then it will occur. So that's in the work. I don't think it'll happen this winter, but maybe in the summer, a move might happen. Um, wouldn't be opposed to that. He is evaluating offers right now from Milan, Leverkusen, and RB Leipzig. So we'll see how that goes. Fernabache are waiting for the green light for Ricardo Rodriguez. Uh, there was a rumor that a deal had been agreed. Uh, just waiting for uh, Fernabache to give the go ahead. But Fernabache are kind of in a tough situation because of financial fair play. Um, so, in order for this move for Ricardo Rodriguez to occur, Fernabache have to give up one of their players. Um, and I think they're thinking about giving up either Max Cruz or Victor Moses. Victor Moses wants to go to Serie A uh, side Inter Milan uh, to team up with Antonio Conte, who was his previous manager at Chelsea. So the move to Fernabache for Ricardo Rodriguez is being stalled. The Matteo Politano Spinazzola deal swap deal uh, to Roma has failed. So Matteo Politano. It's still at Inter, which is quite interesting because I don't know if Milan will still go for him. But additionally to that, because of that, Milan have been interested in Roma's Cengiz Under. Um, and since Roma is interested in buying Suso, there was a rumor that a swap deal might occur. But supposedly, like, Roma wants the swap deal in, like, 20 million euros cash. Uh, which Milan thinks is absolutely um, unacceptable. And it's because Cengiz Un transfer market value is currently higher than Suso's. Since Suso's not playing as well, his value has decreased. But there's also a rumor that Juan Jesus, the center back, might be included in that swap deal. So we'll see how things go. Um, Suso, again, linked with Roma. I think he's also been linked with some Spanish sides. Uh, Piontek has been linked with Lyon and Valencia, along with the Premier League sides that I mentioned last week. And Paqueta, um, still linked with PSG. Piontek and Paqueta both can leave if the 
fee of the transfer is 35 million euros so that means milan don't lose money so that's about what they paid for those two players personally i think that milan should keep piontek and keep paqueta it's kind of hard for paqueta because the system that pioli's playing doesn't really require his position but i think they should keep these two players and give them more time times so you gotta feel for them um they both just went through three managers, you know, tough times, you know. Milan have also been linked with the United States defender, Anthony Robinson, who plays with Wigan Athletic. Don't know much about him, but he's promising. I know he's very tall. Into Serie A fixture number 20, uh, it is Milan versus Udinese. Now, Milan played Udinese in the first fixture of Serie A that we were playing at Udinese. And we lost 1-0. That was a game where I think that we really could have won, but in the end, the Marco Giampaolo mess wasn't the best thing that happened to us. Today was a very important game. We needed three points. Torino dropped points, uh, and it seems like teams that are above us are starting to drop points. Uh, Cagliari dropped points. They drew against Russia. So today was a must win. Donnarumma, Conti, Romagnoli, Kair, uh, Hernandez, Castillejo, Benacer, Cassier, Bonaventura, Leal, Ibrahimovic. Now, with the start of the game, I would say that it was a poor start for Milan. Poor passing, and it just seemed like we were kind of nervous and unsettled, and we're the home team. Like, in about the sixth, seventh minute, Gianluigi Donnarumma decides to come off his line and Try to clear the ball, he didn't work out, and it was an open net, and we didn't say scores, so we're down 1 0, which kind of was a little rocky. It was like, whoa, you know, the game just started, Milan just conceded. Like, are, are we gonna win this? Milan got their things together. We had a couple of opportunities uh, towards the end of the first half, we had an opp opportunity. Um, where Castillejo was shot on goal. There was a cross uh, from Theo to Ibrahimovic that didn't really go in. And the first half was all right. It was not the best. We had a bad start, but it seems like Milan picked it up after the 20th minute mark. At the end of the half, we had eight shots, one shot on target, and we had 55% possession. I'd say good work from Leal and Castillejo from their build-up play, uh, good work from Ben Acer. Um But honestly, the first half, it, it was kind of difficult for us to break down Udinese because Udinese plays a 3-5-2 normally, but when you're defending, they play a 5-4-1. So when you have five defenders at the back, you just draw everybody back. It's kind of complicated and hard to break down. So at halftime, I don't know why, but this it seems to be a reoccurring thing. AC Milan under Stefano Pioli. Halftime, Giacomo Bonaventura comes off. And to be honest, Bonaventura was pretty poor. He didn't really do anything. He didn't create any chances or any opportunities. He wasn't stringing any passes or anything. So Bonaventura comes off and Ante Rebic comes off. Now, Ante Rebic played in the Coppa Italia against Spa. He almost scored. He had like three, four opportunities to score, but he didn't score. Rebic comes on, second half begins. Immediately, Rebic's first touch is a goal. On the pitch for two minutes, and it's his first goal in the shirt of a... Absolutely amazing. We get back into the game. We still have about... 40 minutes to win this all so it continues the high press from Castillejo and whatnot all these elements coming in together Castillejo and Rebic I think those two on the wings kind of deadly but anyways in the 71st minute there was a corner the ball gets put in Nobody really latches on it, it gets cleared, and Theo Hernandez is at the end of the box, decides to do an outrageous volley. Boom, to the back of the net. 2-1, Milan, Udinese. With that goal, Theo Hernandez is the first defender to score five goals since Panucci. That's record-breaking. Theo Hernandez is currently Milan. 
Milan's top goal scorer with five goals in the Serie A and he had one goal in the Coppa Italia so he has six goals in all competition. With that going to 71st minute I'm like okay well Milan just need to hold on and get the win. But that's not what happened. To be quite fair, Kevin Lasagna was terrorizing our defense with his pace. Lasagna, uh, there's the speed again, Lasagna. I give credit to Simon Kerr for trying, oh, but Kerr is 30 and Lasagna is pretty young. He's not going to be able to keep up with him. He did his best to uh, man mark him. Credit to Gen Luigi Donnarona for the multiple saves that he made to keep Milan in this game. Um, Honestly, the game should have been 2-2 a couple of times because of the shots and opportunities that Udinese had, but they didn't really use them to their advantage. But nevertheless, in the 85th minute, there's a cross that goes in uh, since Quanti isn't fast oh, enough. Oh, it's excellent play really once more. Kevin he Lasagna. Lasagna, he's favorite. done it! Bottom corner of the net, 85th minute, 2-2. Now, watching the game and seeing how this happened i'm like you didn't need say you really want to draw like they're gonna settle for the draw and that's exactly what they were trying to do they were time wasting they were trying to keep possession and they were trying to do anything in their possible way to keep the draw and, you it. and out of nowhere in the, the 93rd minute the super sub Ante Rebic strikes again, he scores in the 93rd minute, was 90 minutes, uh, he minutes in stop it the San Siro goes wild, I go wild, and Milan come away with the win, 3-2, home against Udinese. Latani Ibrahimovic has become the fastest player uh, to win 150 games in Serie A. Zlatan has played 222 games, 150 wins, and 123 goals. This is our first home win since Halloween. Uh, this is also the first time we have scored at the San Siro since November when Giacomo we'll hit to level it up at 1 1 and you can see. So it's a lot. It's a lot of happiness. It's a lot of joy. Waking up at 5 30 to watch this game. Like, it's rewarding for a Milan fan. And, so all the Milanistas who have stuck through this club through thin and thin, like, it's starting to pay off. It's not perfect, but it's starting to pay off. It's starting to look better. Things things are turning around for us. And I'm very happy. Uh, obviously, the man of the match will be Ante Rebic for his super sub uh, appearance, scoring a brace. Um, couldn't ask for more. I think Milan need one more signing before the window closes to solidify things. Um, we are currently sitting in eighth place right now. We are level with Parma, but underneath them because of goal difference, because we've conceded more goals. We are two points from sixth place with Cagliari, and we are seven points away from fifth place with Atalanta. Uh, Atalanta play on Monday, so, and they play against Spa. I think they will win. So we'd be 10 points off of fourth place, would be a Champions League spot. Realistically, anything can still happen. Champions League is not out of sight, but I really think that we can get a Europa League spot, which would be great. Overall, I'd say Donnarumma made up for his mistake in the first half. Uh, he pulled off a bunch of great saves in the second half to make up for the goal that he conceded. Uh, Romagnoli did his job. Care did his job to the best of his ability. Kind of unfair because he's lacking pace. Uh, Conti had a decent game, uh, not the best. Um, Theo Hernandez did his job. Ben Asser did his job. Cassier was, he was decent. Um, Castillo put in a lot of work. He really did put in a lot of work. You didn't see much of Ibra today, but Ibra was more of a playmaker today. Um, just helping out with the build up of play. And Rebic, man of the match, scoring two goals. Um, I think people are starting to see the Zlatan effect that I expected. 
Nobody expected Zlatan to come into this team and, you know, score a goal every game, but he's changing the players, how they feel, how they react, how motivated they are, how they see the, the red and black shirt. I'll see you guys next Friday where we take on Brescia. Until then, Forza Milan. Peace.